Hi, this is Joe McNally for Adorama TV, and in this video, I'm going to deconstruct how to bring light from two different directions through a window so that it looks like natural daylight. Adorama TV presents Photo on the Go with Joe McNally, where you'll go behind the scenes to see how great photos are made. Hi, this is Joe McNally for Adorama TV. The reason I go to Adorama, it's a real store with real people, and I've got friends and associates there who have guided me through all my camera purchases for years. Okay, in this video, I'm going to take a group of speed lights, one group will be high, another group will be low, and bring it through a diffusion panel in a big window because my subjects are wearing hats, cowboy hats specifically. And hats are wonderful, they're informative, they become part of someone's character, you know, but they also can be problematic when you're trying to light something because they shadow the eyes. So I'm going to discuss a couple strategies about how to get around that in a natural looking way. Okay, so here's the deal. I'm going to do two portraits, a cowboy and a cowgirl, okay? Uh, they're both married, by the way. Cool couple. So I've got a situation where there's a, a street out here, okay? Streets out here. There's kind of an old-fashioned, you know, uh, uh, western walkway, and then there's uh, a saloon. And this saloon has a really big window right about there. Sizable window, okay? And then there's Another window here, okay? And then a saloon swing doors down in here. My subjects, okay, I'm gonna put right next to this big window. So say the subject is gonna be here, okay? Cowboy hat, subject, okay, right there. Let's call it that position. My camera is down here. In this instance, I'm using a long lens, 70 to 200. Why am I using a long lens? I want to minimize my background. I'm shooting at 2.8 on a uh, 70 to 200 millimeter lens. That means my backdrop, which is an old battered wall, is just going to go very soft, almost like a painted backdrop, uh, kind of almost like a studio portrait. Okay, first things first, diffuse the window. Again, could be a bed sheet. I travel with a last light 6x6 diffuser skylight panel. Okay, so I put that on stands out here, okay, so that seals the window. It's important to seal the window because if you don't have that diffuser completely covering the window and there's slivers of just plain glass, what's going to happen? Light is going to slide right through that uh, sliver that you have not diffused and it's going to create a hard splash of light against the wall or the background or your subject. So make sure you seal the window. Next, I put a stand out here, okay, a C stand in this instance, okay, and again, one of, you know, favorite things I've been using a lot lately is a tri-flash. So I have three flashes there, okay, coming through the window. Now, that's a tried and true, you know, uh, decent solution. I am driving them, as I have in the past, with an SC29 linkage to a commander flash right here, firing down this way, and it's speaking to those lights up there. I can control those lights from here. Okay, fine. Um, simple, direct, easy to do. But what about the hats? You know, if I've got a cowboy and, or a cowgirl and they're giving me a little attitude, maybe tipping the head down, something like this, and I have all this window light coming this way, what's going to happen? Their eyes will be shadowed. So what I have to do is create a little wash of light upwards. What does light coming through a window oftentimes hit? Very first thing, the floor. It skips right off the floor and maybe bounces back up. So I take that as my cue and I build another group of lights that are in a what's called an uplight, okay? There's an uplight right here. It's a small, yeah, relatively small diffuser, not, not huge. And what I do is it's an angle type of a thing where at 45 degrees there's a diffuser. Underneath of it, lying flat on the ground, is a reflector, okay? Different types of reflectors, could be silver, could be gold. In this instance, I put my two flashes right here, two SBs right here on those little um, base plates that come with the unit. They're floor stands, you know, so I got them right down on the floor, firing upwards through that diffuser re-diffusing here at the window. So the effect of this is very soft and not particularly strong. So in other words, it blends into the existing pattern of light that's created by the main flashes, which are creating the overall window lit feel. That's the key to getting the light under the hat, okay? That low fill. So now I've got two groups of lights. Speaking to both of them from the camera, 
to the commander. The commander looks at both of these. So I've got the predominant light source coming kind of 45 degree through the diffuser to my subject. Then I've got this angle of light coming upwards towards them that's filling up and under the hat. If you see, say, the portrait of the cowgirl, okay, she's wonderful. She's got her head tipped down in a real kind of moody, sort of, you know, Western way, kind of cool, but you need to get light in there, and that's what this group of light is doing for me. So I'm on a tripod, 70 to 200 millimeter lens. That lens is key in this instance because the length of it separates my subject. It drops the background out. Okay, now we shot this with the D3X, which is a camera we no longer have. We've migrated to D4s. One thing I'll show you, people ask me about this every once in a while, I don't use the standard plastic um, lens shade that comes with the lens. This is kind of old school. It's a rubber hood um, and it's a 77 millimeter ring, so you screw it onto the lens. It's from an old Mamiya system that I had. So this collapsible rubber hood, I just kind of like it. It absolutely, you know, helps protect the lens and you know there might be every once in a while you might see the slightest bit of vignetting and certain odd combinations of f-stops and and uh, focal lengths doesn't bother me at all really okay i like the fact that i can just push this back in or pull it out the 70 to 200 is a lens that goes with me all the time if i was to take three lenses only i would take a 14 24 24 70 70 to 200 if I took two lenses, it would be 2470, 70 to 200. Basically, this is a go-to lens. We kind of never leave home without it, you know? And uh, in this instance, it was crucial to emphasize the character, you know, the strength of my subjects because you get that compression with longer lenses. Also dropping the background out, throwing it out of focus. What the power of long glass does, it isolates, right? It pulls your subject. It lets the viewer know that this person and nothing else is the key to this picture. That's the subject matter. That's where your eye should go. So let's cycle back to the actual numbers of this, okay? I mentioned earlier, uh, we've moved on. We no longer have the D3X, which this was shot on. Okay, we're now shooting the D4 and D800 series cameras. But the D3X I shot these portraits for was set at ISO 100, which means it was fantastically detailed. And I was able to keep my ISO low because I lit the scene. So 250th at 2.8, 70 to 200 millimeter lens, ISO 100. Cloudy white balance, you know, that gives that natural warmth that you would anticipate the color temperature uh, to be inside kind of a Western saloon. All of that, you know, is, uh, is, you know, what it is. Those are the numbers of the picture. The mix is important though, right? F2.8, final f-stop. Most of the light, as I said, comes from here. Then the fill comes from here. Only you can determine that and it's completely situational. If you want more light to come up from here, then you would lessen the power of the upper lights, okay? If you wanted a little more drama coming low, that is completely up to your personal taste. The mix of light between the dominant and the main is completely variable, okay? And it's as you see fit, all right? In this instance, the natural aspects of this took over in my head and I wanted most of the light to come from up above, which is where we come from ordinarily, and the fill just to be slight and incremental from below. But that mix, as I said, is up to you. Just play with it and get a visual feel. The LCD is a good way to do that. Get a feel for how much or how little light you want coming from which direction. So once again, Joe McNally for Adorama TV. All the stuff I have here that I shoot, all my stuff comes from Adorama. In particular, I have a relationship with the section of the store known as Adorama Pro. As a pro, I'm on the go all the time, traveling like crazy. So what I expect out of that area of a camera store uh, is a good advice good wisdom, and fast turnaround. So once again, Joe McNally, Adorama TV. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 8 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.